because I know about Shankaracharya, I don't know enough much about Ramanujacharya. Um, yeah, so Ramanujacharya, about, let's say, not, not so many years after, but like less than 500 years after, yeah, Shankaracharya. It's probably like 400, 300 years after mm -hmm. Shankaracharya. Uh, Ramanujacharya comes and there are these, because when Shankaracharya comes, he does Advait and then the practices that come out of there, like we have understood Shankaracharya as mm -hmm. what he wanted, like the Advait. Now, talking about those things that come with tradition and how people understand after Shankaracharya has, has done his commentaries and everything, there are these vices that come in because when we say that you are one with Brahman mm -hmm. and you don't have to do anything, mm -hmm. only um, like you just have to know that you are Brahman, mm -hmm. then all this tamas comes in because there are only two ways people normally understand something. Mm -hmm. Either it's in tamas or it's in rajas. Mm -hmm. So, so many people understood Shankaracharya in tamas like, mm -hmm. because it's that's what they got from it. That just just sit back and things will happen to you because you already you've already reached Brahman. You don't have to do anything. Mm -hmm. That came in, and then also um, the Murti Puja mm -hmm. also was declining. Why? Mm -hmm. Because there was a perspective that Shankaracharya put. Yeah, and then if you're already one with Brahman, then why even worship Brahman? Also, the fact that Shankaracharya had built four Char Dhamma, as we know them. Mm -hmm. It was Shankaracharya who built them. Mm -hmm. And he had installed murtis there. Mm -hmm. But um, And he has also done some stotras on, on Shri Krishna, on Devi, on Shiva as well. Mm -hmm. But, you know, as tradition goes on, the Murti Puja and the stotra and the worship has declined by the time Ramanujacharya has come. Mm -hmm. And people are more in tamas rather than knowing. Yeah, mm -hmm. they, They're not knowing it particularly, mm -hmm. but they're just going by the tradition that, oh, things are just going to come. Mm -hmm. We don't need to do anything. Then Ramanujacharya comes. So he has to do something that brings back Murti Puja. Yes. He has to do something that brings people out of tamas. Mm -hmm. like he has to bring them literally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what he does is Vishishta Dwe. He says it is Adwe. It's it's not it's not Dwe, it's not two, it's Adwe. But then it is Vishishta, meaning that um Jiva exists, like Brahman is there, like Brahman is Adwe. But then Jiva exists and Maya exists. Mm -hmm. It's not that they're separate from Brahman, but they are part of Brahman. Mm -hmm. So you should realize that sansara is there and you have to get to Brahman from sansara. You mm -hmm. can't say this sansara itself is Brahman. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's how we put it. And then the one who is going from the sansara to the Brahman is going to be the Jeev. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, it's Adwe. Mm -hmm. That's fine. Like We can keep that aside. But then what will happen to you right now if you do not know these distinctions mm -hmm. is a really bad thing mm -hmm. that you'll just fall in tamas. Mm -hmm. And then what, um, so he, he did all that, like Vishishtadvai, and brought back like Murti Puja, because now if Jeev is there, Sansara is there, and Brahman is there, then Jeev has something to do from Sansara to Brahman. Mm -hmm. Brings people out of Tamas, so um, they start worshipping Murtis again, they get <clears throat> out of Tamas, like coming to Rajas. More now, at that particular time, people come into sattva directly mm -hmm. because now they have, they, because Ramanacharya himself is there and you know what an Acharya can do mm -hmm. to, to people, like just his presence can bring a lot to people. Mm -hmm. Then even in his tradition now, what happens is people cling to Murti Puja. Mm -hmm. People cling to like this idea of like duality, like it's not one. We know sansara is there and Brahman is there. It's not one. Surely it is two. Mm -hmm. And then like the Vaishnav Sampradaya comes about. Like mm -hmm. all this duality now. Now all the other Acharyas, whether it's Nimbarka Acharya or Madhva Acharya, they will do a commentary 
like there is a duality mm -hmm. either they will do bheda mm -hmm. or they will do bheda bheda something like that that's mm -hmm. that's that's what they will do mm -hmm. so that is how it has come about and we should understand that there was a time like and this as i told you it goes in circles like it's going in cycles so there was a time like buddha was here and he did his work even though it was not so prevalent in india but it was so in india like it was there in india and so many people accepted buddhism in india it was when shankaracharya came in that he did advait and vedas should not like be put aside they should be in the middle then he put back the vedas in the middle and that was a time like between buddha and shankaracharya and all that time it was a time for like jnana mm -hmm. what happened after that is that jnana got polluted now because everything there is a time for it and then when it declines there is a pollution that comes in it mm -hmm. then you have to put up another system that ramanuja acharya did mm -hmm. he put up the system of bhakti mm -hmm. now what happened over time as well is bhakti had its time and then it got polluted yes now jnana is coming back again mm -hmm. again so yes. jnana is now going to is is it is actually coming back again like in india at least that's what i see jnana is coming back again and then we shall see its peak at some point yes no it's yeah. beautiful um let me say it in my own words and uh, tell me what uh, you know this this is what i understand you know shankaracharya was focused on brahma and he had advaita real advaita where yeah. he could see brahma operating everywhere but and, and and you can get his point because you know us what what we are like right now we see sansara and we are like brahman is never there like we have never seen brahma so why accept brahman only sansara exists yes by the perspective of shankaracharya it is that sansar i don't even see sansar what are you talking about i only see brahman mm -hmm. and when you reach that state that's when you've reached the ultimate when you only see brahman yes yeah. but what happens is that when somebody is coming after that they say okay i have brahman they actually don't have brahman okay they say yes. i have brahman <laughs> so now i don't need to do anything one sure. when you say that you're basically saying no to the entire sansar and you're going in the tamas mode complete tamas mode so you are pretending to have brahma and because of that you are actually you know deprecating and spitting on sansar and as a result of that you're just doing tamas looks like what ramanuja acharya did ramanuja acharya did is that he came back and said sansar is a manifestation of brahma so pursue your rajas and bhakti and through the action you can you know actually achieve brahma so it is you know it is kind of brings back the value of this world so it's like you know talking about it in terms of world you know there is brahma there is the world and there is nothingness you know kind of saying no okay tamas is basically saying no to to actually everything uh you know you may pretend to say brahma but when you are in tamas mode fully it's that's it's basically nihilism and what looks like what ramanujacharya did is that he focused on the world and showed the connection between world and brahma and reestablished that through bhakti that's what i understand is that uh, is that accurate um yes yes um when what the rajas comes about is in the tradition but for mm -hmm. him himself it was like sattva should be put about mm -hmm. removing the tamas yes so in in the perspective that brahman is there what ramanujachar act, actually did is that sansara is as real as brahman is yes. like as real that's mm -hmm. how real sansara is it's not that like now you you can see the difference between shankaracharya and ramanujacharya like 
Sankaracharya would say the sansar is the most mithya thing you can talk about. Mm -hmm. It's unreal. Mm -hmm. Now Ramanujacharya comes and says that it's the most real thing you can talk about. It mm -hmm. is true. It's real. And it is as real as Brahman is true because it is a manifestation of Brahman. That's how Brahman yeah. shows himself to you. Wow. So why, why say it's not there? Yes. And he will give his own like logic and anuman and his examples or like examples in true life. But this is like how I get it, like the whole perspective. And then in his tradition also, there's a time that comes when Rajasa prevails now. Like right. It becomes all, all so Rajasa. For, for a moment, let's just focus on Ramanujacharya. So, so far, everything that you've said is just amazing. I mean, because he, he gets both those things and he sees that it is one, it's the unmanifested manifesting. So manifestation is real. The unmanifest is real. Both are real. Now, tell me, where does bhakti come in this? How is bhakti related to this? Yes. So bhakti, what for Ramanujacharya, bhakti is something that takes you toward, because all this is true. It's a manifestation of the unmanifest. That's how he has put it. All this is true, but you right now are a jiva. You're not Brahman. So you have to accept that, accept your reality right now. And even that is as true as what Brahman is, your reality right now, like what you practically feel, experience right now. What happens is where bhakti comes in is for you to now get from where you are you recognizing sansara as it is, it's fine. You recognizing yourself as you are right now is fine. Now get from the perspective of where you are, get to a higher perspective. Mm -hmm. Because now that's when you'll be able to receive Brahman within yourself. Only through bhakti. And for Ramanujacharya, the main point is sharanagati. Like if like prapati, it's, it's, it's in Sanskrit. Even Sharnagati is in Sanskrit, but mm -hmm. the term he uses is prapatti, mm -hmm. which means Sharnagati, like putting all that you have in front of him and just opening up. Mm -hmm. So in a way, Jnana also teaches us to open up. Yeah? It, it doesn't tell us to close, but then Tamasa that came into, it closed people. So Ramanujacharya now wanted to open them back, like open up. Mm -hmm. Why are you so closed in your cocoon? And even what Ramanujacharya brought, I feel, to the community at that time was also creativity because like Tamasa dissolves all your creativity. It now brings, like it closes you in a way. What Ramanujacharya did is open you up and bring back your creativity. And the best way to do it is through bhakti because if you have bhakti within yourself, in its own form, love, even though you don't get to bhakti, like even though you're in, on the way, if you've reached love at least, like unattached love, yeah, it's not a desire, or it's not an attachment, but it's love. So even though you reach love, you have all that creativity within yourself, like the painting or the like making creative types of food and making like dancing and all that, like that brings up bhakti, like that brings up love. And that's part of like all the creative world around us. So he brought that back to India, like he brought all that back. It was there in a way, like the Puranas and all that. But then, you know, there's a perspective, you look at something and then Ramanachar brings another perspective to the same thing, the Vedas, the Puranas. And it's interesting how each and every Acharya, they will say, it is said in the Vedas and it's said in the Puranas, it's said in the Upanishads. We're not saying something new, it's all there. What we're doing is just unraveling it, just showing it to you. That's what Raman Jachari does. Wow. Wow. Um, I mean, this is, this is very profound because this cycle, you know, cycle continues. Like you cannot really rely on anything that has been achieved because it has to be rediscovered by the next generation. And they have to internalize it. 
And in so doing, there is a tremendous temptation of taking the forms of whatever somebody has said, like you said about Shankaracharya, and then again Ramanujacharya. Ramanujacharya, yeah. Um, that because and and anything, anything can be can be turned into a form. You know, any proper function that was proper in the beginning can be turned into a form. And uh, so wonderful. And then, you know, the greatness of people like Ramanujacharya is to come and fix it, you know, into, or yeah. to bring it together. Yeah. And then those who are like, okay, because I have been to all places like Ramanujacharya, Shankaracharya and all places. So this is how I view it. But then I wouldn't say that all people view it like this. Mm -hmm. But, you know, um, what... What, you, uh, what they would say like in, in their own own things is that, oh, Shankaracharya did one thing and then Ramanujacharya did another thing. Like either they will say that it's a supplement or mm -hmm. they will say that um, these two people are, are radically different. Mm -hmm. Like one, one side, another, another side. But what I see it as is that it is the demand of people, the demand of time that these people come. And they do their job in their greatness. It's the same thing they're reinstating, but then they have to do it in a different way because they don't, people don't understand the old way. If you, if you show them the old way as it is, what they will do is just cling back to what they were doing. They will say, this was the same thing we were doing. Why? There's nothing new in this yeah, that you're saying. So you have to show them another kind of thing so that they get back into the same state that Shankaracharya was telling them to get back. And so there's no like total difference between them. And it's not that even one supplements the other, no. It's that they were fully what the time needed. That's yes. why they were Acharyas. Yes, no, that's, that's a great point. Because what, what, I mean, the way I understand what you're saying is that these great Acharyas, what they are doing is that they are, integrating the context of their time and they are bringing the truth bringing the truth of the vedas in the modern times and in so doing it's going to look different because it has to actually deal with the kinds of things actions ideas habits feelings that are prevalent at that time. So in order to speak to that, and this is, again, I really like the word bhashya. You know, this is what they are saying to their own people, their own times. And when you understand that, when you understand what they have said in the context of their time, then you really understand it. Because then, as you are saying, Bhashya of Shankaracharya and Bhashya of Ramanujacharya. If you just say, talk about what they are saying, right? That is looking at both their Bhashyas without the person who is listening, without the Shrota, right? The Bhashya is for the Shrota. The Shrota is his time. And once you understand that, then you can look at these Bhashyas at a higher level of saying, both of them are trying to do the same thing in different contexts. Wonderful, wonderful. Yeah, so that's how I understand the different acharyas. And Ex this is like kind of, let's say, a personal thing because even people around me, they will not, they will, they will not say, this is it, yeah? Well, I can explain it to them, but then, what I would say is, I don't know, I'm, I'm even young. I don't, I'm just like, mm -hmm. I was born in 96. I'm just mm -hmm. young. So mm -hmm. I'm just trying to figure out all this. Mm -hmm. But so far, like I can see what they were trying to do at their own times. That's how, mm -hmm. I, that's how I view it. Mm -hmm. And there are all these views, different views. When you go there, there's this like different views and the like when you go into Shankaracharya's uh, whatever ashramas, you'll see what type of ideas they have about Ramanujacharya. Then when you go to the Ramanujacharya ashrams, you'll see what type of ideas they have about Shankaracharya and the other acharyas as well. So 
being in all these places for a substantial time, this is what I have gotten out of that. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so 